Look what he says. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, seen being understood from what has been made. So that men are without excuse. Just go outside and look around and that reveals the glory of God. You cannot get an artistic creation without an artist. Don't talk about evolution and a big bang theory. You cannot get art- artistic colors like this, intricate detail in the mountains and the rivers and streams and the oceans of the world, the minute microorganisms that live here from the amoeba up to things like elephants and giraffes and, 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 and eagles and birds and robins and canaries and all this intricate stuff all around us. You can't get this kind of creation without a creator. That's like somebody taking uh, wood, sinks, uh, shelves, cabinets, stairs, carpet, wood, hardwood floors and all that and dumping it on a lot on Monday. And on Tuesday you come back and there's a house standing there finished and fully fully furnished. (laughs) What kind of sense that makes? It's like you're taking all the stuff that will make a house, just taking it and dumping it on an open field. 24 hours later you come back. It's a fully furnished house with plumbing, wire, electrical wiring, uh, you know, everything, cable TV, everything in it, intricately working, and all you did was dump the, the, the raw material on a lot. That's what the Big Bang Theory is saying. All this elaborate design just came from a Big Bang in the universe. That's man's reprobate mind not wanting to honor God. That's why he says, what can be made known of him is, seen, is plainly seen by that which is made. You cannot say there's not a God because creation is yelling at you that there is a God. Sun, moon, stars, oxygen here. Every, I mean, everything down here yells at you. There's a God. There is a God. There is a God. Now, what you do about it is up to you after you, after you come to the determination that there is a God. Man's next move in rebellion, after he said there is a God, well, if there is a God, I'm going to make him into what I say he is as opposed to what he reveals himself to be. So I won't have to worship him the way he wants to be worshipped so I can do what I want to do. So I'm going to make God into a homosexual or a pervert or a freak or whatever I want to be. You know, that's why uh, you get Rastafarians who, who want to smoke dope making it, make it into a religious endeavor to smoke dope. See, this is, a, this is my religion, smoking this dope as a Rastafarian. Ganja. Is a religious experience. Man, you just a dope smoking dude, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can take any stupid thing that you want to and try to make it religious and make it something to do with God because you're rebelling against God. People do it all the time. Anything that they want to do, they make it a religion to say God has ordained this. Allah is actually the moon God that was actually the reigning deity over Muhammad's tribe. It was the moon god. That's why the, the symbol for the Muslims is a crescent, moon, and a star. It, it, it's, it's, Allah is a moon god. That's who he is. That's who he is historically. He was the reigning deity over Muhammad's tribe. He took that moon god and made it into Allah and created Islam. And now you got a billion people buying into it because it allows them to rebel against God. I can do what I want to do in a proud, arrogant way and call it God. I can go and blow myself up and kill folks and maim people and behead them in the name of Allah. Because that's what you want to do. You want to kill, maim, and murder people. So you got to make up a God that will uh, authorize it. This is not rocket science. This is the way it is in people's minds. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. I believe the King James says they became vain in their imaginations and their foolish hearts were darkened. When you're vain in your imaginations, what you do, you imagine things that are not real and you worship them as if they are real. Let me give you a good example of this. Here's a stark example of how you become vain in your imaginations. You take Disney World... And you set Disney World on one hand. You take the Vatican and set it on the other hand. Now I'm going to show you the parallels between Disney World and the Vatican. Both of them are magic kingdoms. With big castles sitting up in the magic kingdom. 
St. Peter's Basilica is one castle. Mickey Mouse's castle is the other castle. In both magic kingdoms, you have a central figure, figure that is worshipped. Mickey Mouse at Disney World, the Pope at the Vatican. You take a two-year-old child down to Disney World and you show a Mickey Mouse, he's going to think Mickey Mouse is real. He's going to say, Mom, Dad, that, that's Mickey and Minnie Mouse. Let me go see them. Let me take pictures with them. Let me, Mickey, be running behind Mickey Mouse, knowing Mickey Mouse is real. Not taking into account that you just saw Mickey Mouse around the corner. Then you go up around the other corner, there's another one. And you go across the park and you got about 50 of them down there. But he thinks that's the same person that's showing up different locations. The two-year-old mind now, a fantasy-stricken, imaginary mind, making up a figure and receiving that figure is real. Go over to the Vatican. You'll find the Pope there. Walking around, imaginary figure, conjured up through Constant, Constantinople's mind to actually merge Rome with a church that they can control. Now the, now a billion folk believe the Pope is real like, like a two-year-old kid believes Mickey Mouse is real. They see the Pope, they pay homage to them, they got altar, they're at the altar with rosary beads, praying and crying because the Pope walks by. Mickey Mouse wears a cone-shaped magician's hat. The Pope wears a cone-shaped magician's hat that's worshiping Dagon, the fish god. It's actually a fish's mouth cut out in the Pope's, Pope's hat that's worshiping Dagon, Dagon, the fish god. That's why it looks like it looks. It's a mitre that worships and pays homage to Dagon, the fish god, which the Philistines worshiped back in the days of Samson. You remember when Samson destroyed the temple, he pushed over the, the pillars in the temple and destroyed, destroyed the fish god, Dagon. The Pope is nothing more than a priest of Dagon. Imagining that this person is real, they pay homage to him. Mickey Mouse came out of the mind of a man, Walt Disney, who was a homosexual, years ago. He came as a magician with a cone-shaped hat doing, doing magic tricks. And the kids have worshipped him all these years. He's got a magic kingdom. He's got a multi-multi-billion dollar empire set up and built around Mickey Mouse. The same is true of the Pope. King of sodomites and homosexuals. $2.6 billion paid out in reparations to people who have been sodomized and, and, and have been victims of pedophilia performed by re renegade, wild dog, homosexual, sodomite priests. With the whole lineage of, of people around the world who defend these sodomites because they've been taken over by the mind of these sodomites. Parallels. All right, here's the greatest parallel. Let's say you got a guy standing down in, in a Disney World as Mickey Mouse in the clown suit, in the little old suit that they made for Mickey Mouse. The guy gets old, he dies. So Mickey, what would you say, Mickey Mouse is dead? No. You get a younger guy, put him in the suit, and Mickey Mouse is still alive. All right, Pope dies. <laughs> you got the Pope suit standing there. You just let the old man die, get rid of him, put another young dude in the Pope suit, and the Pope still lives. It's all imaginary. You got a Pope suit back in the corner, just like you got a Mickey Mouse costume back in the corner. You just put a body in it and put him forth as the Pope, and the people start bowing down to this new nut. This is an old man in a Pope suit. This is an old man in a Mickey Mouse suit. It's the same thing. Billions of dollars made out of both kingdoms, both magic kingdoms made billions of dollars, and it tells you how stupid mankind is. Mankind is crazy. And you got to get your mind real back in into normalcy to think normally and logically again. Folks who don't even know the Pope, folks who don't even know this man, are dying and going to hell, appended to the Roman Catholic Church faithfully. Never knowing him, never having a basis from this thing from the Bible. Find the Pope in the Bible. Find the virgin birth. Uh, I mean, the, you can find the virgin birth, but find an immaculate conception for Mary in the Bible saying she's born sinless. If Mary is born sinless, Mary could be the Savior. You don't need Jesus. Just kill Mary. Find infant baptism. 
Find all the rituals and sacraments of the Roman Catholic Church. Find purgatory. You can't find none of this garbage in the Bible and you put your whole life down on something that's as real as Disney World and Mickey Mouse. You'd be better off worshiping Mickey Mouse. At least you can get to Disney World. <laughs> you can't even get to the Vatican. You can't afford to fly to the Vatican. You can drive down to Disney World. I'm paying. I'm, I'm taking my money down to Mickey Mouse and getting some rosary beads and pray to Mickey Mouse for what it's worth. That's right. And when they pray to Mary, they're basically praying, praying to Minnie Mouse, Mickey's wife. <laughs> That's right. This is crazy. If you make this presentation, this argument with anybody, if, if they get mad after you make this presentation, they're insane. If you cannot see this, you have lost your mind. It's something wrong with you. You have gone crazy. A good video will be, will be to contrast and compare Disney World with the Vatican. Yes. See, look at this. <laughs> now look at this. Look at this guy here. Okay, look at the, the, the pomp and circumstance when the Pope comes by in this long parade. Now look at the electric light parade with Disney World closes. <laughs> the seven doors, seven uh, cardinals. You know, oh, this, this is crazy. You're crazy, ma'am, sir. You're crazy. You've lost your mind. You're paying. You're paying for sodomite priests. To sodomize your son as an altar boy for the last 10 years. You paid him $2.6 billion now to give them the energy and the ability to sodomize your kids. You sacrifice your kids up to a bunch of sodomite freaks who have no bearing on God, don't know God, never have known God, know nothing about God. The Pope is, a, is, is basically a illiterate concerning God. All the, all the cardinals are, all the bishops are. These are a bunch of fruitcakes who are just playing with people's lives and destroying millions of people one by one. And, uh, and all of a sudden, the, the evangelical Protestant church is strangely quiet. Because they're afraid of the homosexual spirit that rules the Vatican. They're afraid of the sodomites. These are sodomites. These nuns, a lot of these nuns are nothing but lesbians. They hide out in these convents and, these, and in these rectories. And what a name for a place a priest lives. A rectory. A rectumry. You know. I mean what kind of mess is this man? <laughs> this is crazy. This is crazy. And everybody just sits there. Listen to old dull homily given by a sodomite. Talking real soft and quiet to you. You go home and it's like it's a holy place. You know, it's real solemn and quiet. And I used to hate it at Christmas time when you see that mass performed at the at St. Peter's Basilica and over in the Vatican, and the announcer would be whispering as the as the Pope was doing things. Yeah. And now, and now the Pope, he's now taking the chalice and drinking from it, performing the ritual of the. Uh huh. Yes. And now the cardinals are moving through the arena in red, all red. What a beautiful, beautiful spectacle. Oh, it's just lovely, Jean. Yes, Bob. This is just beautiful. The ornate beauty of. Look, this is crazy. <laughs> this is the electric light parade at Disney World when it closes, man. Last Christmas they had a guy with a Mattel doll putting it in a manger. One of the priests put a, a doll in the manger. Told me now he's and the, and the announcer says now he's taking the baby Jesus and placing it in the manger. This is beautiful. And folks just just crying their eyes out. Nuns standing there just crying their eyes out, trying to just wave at the Pope. Getting the Pope comes by and he touch him on the head and they're just sitting there just crying, just weeping and. People, you, you know, you can lose your mind. You can lose your mind in religion. They became vain in their imaginations and their foolish hearts were darkened. And they exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. 